Thank you for the opportunity to present. I'm gonna be talking about when the J pouch doesn't reach, why you don't need to take no for an answer. So just some tips and tricks on when you're in the operating room and you're having a difficult time getting the J pouch down to reach, what can you do? So a couple of disclosures, I'm consultant for Takeda, Mesoblast and Osseum Health. So in general, when you're constructing an ilioanal J pouch, when you're assessing your length and thinking about, okay, before you go do your proctectomy, is this J pouch gonna actually reach all the way down to the pelvic floor? What you wanna look for is you really want that J pouch to reach about two to four centimeters over the pubic symphysis. So you can see here in the picture on the right-hand side is that pubic symphysis and really trying to get that J pouch up and over to assess length. And usually you'll do this before you actually construct the pouch to understand where that apex best reaches and has the most optimal length. The challenge is as we've gone on to robotics and laparoscopy, sometimes we don't have the ability to really pull the J pouch up and over the pubic symphysis. And so we can't get an actual assessment sometimes of length when we're doing the J pouch through the stoma site, for example. But we still want to have an idea of are we going to have good length before we go and do our proctectomy. So there's a series of maneuvers that we try to always do to ensure that we're gonna have maximum length and the least amount of tension possible on the mesentery. So what are these steps? Well, the first step that we always do routinely is you wanna release the small bowel mesentery off the retroperitoneum. So you wanna find that plane where you can lift the small bowel mesentery up and off the retroperitoneum. It's a plane that we're familiar with. Often we do this in a right hemicolectomy. But again, if we've already done the colectomy and now you're here for a second stage for the pouch, sometimes that plane is refused. So you want to lift that up and off. The second step is you want to score or take, actually take the mesentery all the way over to the third portion of the duodenum. So right up to the superior mesenteric vessels. Sometimes in the setting of obesity, it's hard to actually see the mesenteric vessels. So sometimes when you're doing this laparoscopically, it may be hard to identify. So you want to keep taking the mesentery up and over that third portion of the duodenum until you've ensured you're at the vessels, because this will give you much more length when you go to really pull on that mesentery and bring it down. The third step is to perform a high ligation of the ileocolic artery. Sometimes people do this in the first stage if they're doing a two or a three stage approach to their pouch. So sometimes at the time of colectomy, a high ligation of the ileocolic artery has already been done. Other times this has not yet been done at the time of colectomy and you'll be doing it at the second stage during the pouch surgery. So you really wanna do a high ligation, a true high ligation to maximize your reach. The fourth step. So a lot of times we will score the mesentery and when we score the mesentery or we create these relaxing incisions, you do this in parallel or right over the superior mesenteric artery along the length of the SMA. And you wanna do this on both the anterior and the posterior side of the mesentery. Now, sometimes when a patient uh, is thin or they have a nice peritoneal lining to the mesentery, you can really score that and you can see that and you can get a fine clamp underneath and really lift up on that nice layer. Other times you'll find that when you're scoring, the mesentery just seems to tear. Perhaps the patient's been on steroids or they have a fatty mesentery and you just find that it's ripping and then you're creating little hematomas or you're losing uh, control of some of the small vessels in the mesentery. You wanna be careful in those situations because you, your blood supply to the pouch is obviously one of the most important things to preserve. So sometimes the mesentery really doesn't allow for these relaxing incisions. So you just wanna be mindful as you're doing this of tearing of the mesentery and as you pull on it, if the mesentery just tears more. If it doesn't though, you can really do a lot of these relaxing incisions on the anterior and the posterior side and gain quite a bit of length. So let's say you've done all those maneuvers. You've taken the mesentery off the retroperitoneum. You've taken the mesentery all the way over to the superior mesenteric vessels. You've done your relaxing incisions. You've ensured your ileocolic artery has a high ligation and you still don't have good reach. And you're still wondering, okay, how am I going to get this pouch into the pelvis? Because you're sitting there and you're, you have the J pouch constructed and you wanna be able to get it into the pelvis. What are some alternative options that can be used? So one option, but of course this has to be thought of at the time of colectomy, is preservation of the marginal artery. So if you preserve the marginal artery from the middle colic all the way over to the right side, 
you can then rely on that marginal artery to give you good blood supply. And what that allows for then is ligation of the right colic, the ileocolic, and actually the SMA. And this will give you up to 11 centimeters of additional length. But the challenge is you have to do this step at the time of your colectomy. So it's not always conducive when you're sitting there making a pouch that can't breach. So you really have to think about this if you think this is gonna be difficult reach again at the time of colectomy and preserve that marginal, which is not always the most straightforward to do depending on the thickness of the mesentery. But this will give you a lot of extra length. The key thing though, is before you ligate the right colic, the ileocolic, and especially the SMA, you really want to get clamps out and make sure that as you put a clamp on this vessel, do you still have good blood flow to your pouch? So before you simply just ligate this with a ligature or clamps and ties and you come across the vessels, make sure to clamp the vessel and assess for blood flow to your pouch. Because the last thing you want to do is think that you have good collateral blood flow and you come across an artery and then you're no longer able to construct your pouch. So when you're doing this and preserving the marginal and then taking the right and the ileocolic and the SMA, make sure to clamp, assess blood flow, leave that clamp there for a couple of minutes and make sure you really have good blood flow in your collateral circulation. Another option that will give you another two centimeters is switching from a J pouch configuration to an S pouch configuration. Now, S pouches are not as often performed as J pouches because J pouches are much more straightforward technically to perform with a linear stapler. An S pouch requires a lot of hand sewing and there's not as many constructed. So a lot of times trainees are not as well-informed or they haven't uh, constructed as many S pouches, but that is an option that will give you an additional approximately two centimeters of length. So something the skill set would certainly welcome and have in handy. Another thing that you can do is actually place the pouch in a, a different configuration when you pull it down to the pelvis and have the mesentery anteriorly rather than posteriorly. Most often when we bring the pouch down into the pelvis, the mesentery sits along the presacral space and is really posterior rather than laying anterior. But if you lay the mesentery anteriorly, you will get additional reach. So something else to consider if you're really stuck and need a little bit additional length. Another thing you can do is when you are thinking about your rectal dissection and most patients will have medically refractory disease. So ideally we leave a two centimeter cuff, meaning that we leave very, very little rectal tissue behind. But if you're really stuck, you can leave your rectal stump perhaps a centimeter or two longer intentionally so you have less tension on your anastomosis. Again, this is one of the last things you want to think about doing, but it is an option should you really be stuck and not have the length that you need. But again, this is for a centimeter or two. You do not want to leave a majority of rectum or half the rectum or even the lower rectum in place. This is rather than a two centimeter cuff, perhaps you consider a three, maybe four centimeter cuff. But again, last resort to leave an extra centimeter or two just to ensure you do not have tension. So in general, the algorithm when we're thinking about getting a pouch to reach into the pelvis is you want to complete the mobilization of the small bowel mesentery. You want to get that off the retroperitoneum. And then you want to assess for mesenteric length. Now, in an open fashion with a lower midline or a fan and steel, we can pull the pouch up and over at the apex, over the pubic symphysis. Sometimes in robotics or laparoscopy, this may not be as easy if you're constructing the pouch through the ileostomy. But if you can pull it up and over, you want to make sure it goes about three to four centimeters past the pubic symphysis. If it does, then you likely will have perfectly adequate length without any tension on your anastomosis. If it's a close reach, you want to make sure you've ligated the ileocolic artery at the origin. And sometimes you can ligate the distal SMA. But again, you want to clamp that and ensure you have good blood flow to your pouch before you actually ligate it. Also, things like scoring the line of the mesentery, an anteriorly oriented pouch, and then perhaps an S pouch configuration if you're familiar with doing that. If you really have no reach and you have a really significantly shortened mesentery, like it is not even close to getting to the pubic symphysis. This is where when you're doing the colectomy, you really want to think about preserving that right colon marginal artery. 
And that way you can get retrograde flow from the middle colic. And this allows you to ligate the iliocolic, the right colic, and the distal SMA after you've clamped and ensure good blood flow to your pouch. So these are some of the steps when trying to get your pouch to reach. If it's difficult reach, you do not want to leave tension on your anastomosis. So these are a lot of steps that you can perform to get you additional length. Thank you for the opportunity to present. I hope we are all in person next year and we can see each other and enjoy being in person together. Thank you.